right, welcome back to your balance diet of Teletainment. This Faji Fila Feel Good Friday. Where we do all this um, column. Now, time for us to meet the Kadad guest in the house. Now, in just talk one line, say, in being in a fan of the song. And it will surprise you to know, say, we get the gospel artist in the house. The person will actually sing that song where you watch. Mike Abdul is at the house. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. You are for a fan of me. yourself. I am a fan of Korea by Mike Abdul. Amazing. By the way, Faji Feel Good Friday. Yes, Faji Feel it. Feel Good oh Friday. Oh, my. No. Yeah, yes. yes Send yes. me your account number. Ah, <laughs> you see? Make, make, I add, make I add Funky Friday. Make I send my own account number, Joe. I just like it. Faji, what's the word again? Faji, Fali, Fili. Faji, Fili, 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 Good Friday. Ah, it's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. Yes, the house. Uh, thank you for having me. All right, so Mike Abdul, we don't say you now, member of the former... Uh, um, former, for, former. Uh, Still, 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 yeah. still a member okay, yeah. of the Midnight Crew. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and they always call them Midnight Crew family. So <laughs> it is family, family so, for real. Yeah, family. Uh, so you don't take inside the, uh, the, the industry in gospel Let's music. Go. For how many years mm. now, professionally? Uh, professionally since 2001. So wow. this year That's makes 18 it 18 years. years. 18 years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they picking with a bone that time. They don't divorce this year. Yes, now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Right, so That's how did Johnny Don't Be for you so far from, uh, from when you've been start up until now? Well, of course, it started from not being sure. So starting it anyway, mm -hmm. and then finally being sure that uh, we're here now. We die here. We die here. <laughs> so how did you say discover say gospel music now you're calling? Well, um, I think it was an impression created on me by my mother. My mother was a praying person, prayed a lot. Um, we prayed every day. Whether we liked it or not. Every family prayed. Wait, now the family not pray every day. Trust me, and Abel, my this was the Abel, my mother take with us. See our own style. Eh? See our own style with this. My mama go start the prayer. She don't say we go sleep, but she must be, must wake up very early, so we go sleep. But you know the amazing thing. Once you say in Jesus' day we pray from sleep, everybody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So that's that's the way it is. In fact, it, so much that we we describe our, our mother as. Anytime you say, "How does your mother?" I would say, "No, my, my mother prays like a witch." <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way we can describe it. She prays like a witch. No, 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 that woman. You know. So, so I think when it was time for me, I started loving music as a, as, as a child. So. When it was time for me to start practicing, it was difficult not to do gospel because uh, that's all I've known all my years. And, you know, yeah, it's been good. Okay. Tell us a little, bit, a little bit about your, your, your upbringing, basically school. How you been there? Because you say you started from, from childhood. Oh, yes. So I, I won't believe say you've been also been there doing music um, when you've been there in school. Uh, as yes, well. in school. So, so tell us a little about your, your music career. While you've been there in school, preparing yourself for, you know, for the life. <coughs> so yes, so. I think majorly it was uh, Yaba College of Technology. That's where I met members of Midnight Crew. Um, loved to sing and, of course, uh, got invited to a choir called the uh, Original Love Choir in school then. And then that's where, of course, that, that, that's the melting pot where I met other people. And, uh, of course, while there, we, we just gathered ourselves together. We didn't need a concert. We just gather for maybe under one staircase. Don't begin a scene. Somehow people could all gather because they like music, you know, just gather and listen to us. So we did that year long, and by, by the time we decided we we're going to host a concert in school, it was well attended. We were, everybody, in fact, the whole school was at our concert. So it was uh, an encouragement for us, you know. So school was like um, uh, a learning process for us, you understand? And uh, eventually when we saw what happened in school, uh, to leave school, we said, man, this thing cannot just end like this. Let's take it to the bigger world. So that's how November 8, 2001, we decided to start Midnight Crew. And then we took it off from there. So now going solo, even though say Midnight Crew stayed there, yeah. has it been profitable for you? Well, it's, been, it's been a good thing, really. It's really been a good thing. I like going solo well, somehow. <laughs> but this is it. The, this is the idea. We, we believe that if the group became important, that means that the individuals are actually important because the individuals existed before the group. The group exists because the individuals exist. So we believe that if uh, we've been able to build a group to become of this status, then it is not out of place to actually make that platform available for the individual to thrive. You know, so that's the idea. And so 2010, 
was it 2010? Yeah, 2010, we decided let's give individual platforms. Let's be able to have a Mike Abdul. Let's be able to have a Patricia King, a Benga if, if he wants to, Ayo if she wants to. But then the group still exists. We believe very strongly that groups don't really end. Because when you do a song and it's out there, if you like, just say, oh, we don't scatter. But in the future, when they call the title of your song, they'll say it's by Plantation Boys. Mm -hmm. They will not say it's by whoever, you understand? They'll still call your name. So that means you become a legal entity. So you truly, truly do not end. So that's how we, we, we started off uh, the solo careers. And it has been profitable for the group and for the individuals. Okay, beautiful. Now, speaking about profitability of the group and for individuals, gospel music on your own. Mm -hmm. um, now, we don't see a lot of people going into, into gospel music, almost like secular music, if you want to speak, if you, if you want to put it that way. Um, and just as, the, as it be for secular music, say, we, say, we get the likes of them two-faced, then P-square. Well, back then, Peace Square. Mm -hmm. uh, we get the likes of Olamide, David Owen, they call people where they, you know, where they make money, where they make the big, big music. We also get their, those ones too uh, for inside the gospel music uh, uh, sector, so to speak. So I want to ask you, um, how, how, apart from going solo now, gospel music on your own, how lucrative you feel say gospel music be compared to secular music inside the Obodo Nigeria here? And not only in Nigeria, even in the United States, mm -hmm. you cannot really compare um, the kind of money way uh, secular music they make with gospel music, you know, you know, join. Now, and that's basically because uh, for people mind, um, they only give Sunday to God. You know, every other day, they, they, they one day, you understand? Then Sunday, we go give them, you know, they say, okay, that one, we'll give to God. So the same thing affects what they listen to. So I don't think they want to listen to gospel from Monday to Friday. Actually, they want, they want it by the weekend. In fact, preferably by Sunday. In fact, Sunday morning. You understand? <laughs> so, <laughs> so all that affects, it affects what uh, gospel music makes. You understand? Because of, uh, yeah, the traffic. Yeah. Now you get, this person, you get this perception where everybody gets about gospel artists. They believe, say, now sent 9 b they're not supposed to see them, say they miss with uh, people where they go club. Mm. They're not supposed to see them, say they sit down, they drink beer or whatever drink where they want to drink alcohol. Mm. And they're not supposed to see, say, any relationship they put themselves into, you actually break. Let's go personal now. Tell us about your personal life as regards to starting a family. Because I know a um, few years ago, they began this gist, say you were divorced, you were not divorced. Tell us about that. All right. Um... I do not discuss my personal life, mm. and uh, basically because um, I strongly believe that that there are some things, even as much as you are a public performer, mm -hmm. some relationships. In fact, a lot of our relationships are are not meant to be public performances. <coughs> I think they're meant to be very private. So I always uh, choose to be private. Well, right. what about the perception where they get about gospel artists? Say, come, they, they mm. should be saints. They're not supposed to do anything <laughs> uh, where, um, according by them, every mm. other person they do. I think there should be, whatever it is, whether you're a gospel artist or not, there really should be comportment. You should be comported. I think that uh, we really truly cannot choose to be, all these lines where, let me just be myself. We truly cannot be ourselves. That's the real thing. So I, I think we should really be comported. I mean, there are certain things we truly should not do. There are some things you really feel like doing, you understand? But then when you check it out, is it, is it okay? It may not be legal, but then it may just not be, be right or sound right or look right, you understand? Like, uh, uh, um, you get home every night by 11 p.m. There's nothing legally wrong with that, you understand? But excuse me, I mean, what kind of work do you do that you get home by 11 p.m.? You date with my house till 11 for night. I don't know, they married. What do you know? Which kind of gist be that? It's a general artist, not just gospel artists. It's not, you, so, that's, that's where I'm going to. Yes. That's where I'm going uh -huh. to. It's everybody. It's not, it's not just gospel mm -hmm. artists. But of course, when you now um, decide to separate yourself and call yourself gospel or pastor, then there's a lot expected of you. You're supposed to be like a good example, so to speak. Mm -hmm. All right, just before we continue, we'll quickly take one of this, your, one of your popular tracks. I really mm -hmm. call this one Mori Re, and okay. this one I want to I really like, like this like, song. Yeah. I really like this so Let's just take part of Mori Re, and then we come back to the interview with Mike Abdul. Thank you. I actually 
really like this song, really. I love this song. And you just tell us, say, this one are the first song where you actually perform after, As Mike Abdul, yeah. after you decide to come yes, up for the yes, group or yes, rather yes, just yes. do something yes, solo. Yes, yes, yes. It was scary. I was scared. Oh. I was scared. Why, why? What's it going to be if you had to catch you on top of this one? You know, I will. I'd always been a member of Midnight Crew. Oh. You know, so that's the only way I... I have platforms to perform and all of that. It's an ass midnight crew. So when I was going to come out as my Abdul, that was really scary for me. And uh, but 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 I prayed because I I, I, I believe so much that um, eventually, whether you believe it or not, whether you are religious or not religious, that God make you. And then if anybody anybody makes anything, he has purpose for that thing. So God has purpose for everybody he makes. So I decided to pray to God. God direct me on this matter. I won't know what I won't do. Then I heard a word. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed that I, 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 I hear, you know. I heard a word and the word just said that, who is the person the world is listening to like right now? Tell that person to write you a song. And then the person the world is, my world was listening to, the gospel world, was a song called Yes. by Monique. And of course, she was signed to my record label. So I called her. I said, I think you should write me a song. She was like, how? How? Even me, I didn't beg you, may write me a song. I said, please write me a song. I hear something. So funny enough, I traveled with the Midnight Crew. That was 2013. We were in uh, the US. So she called me up and she said, I heard a song in my dream. I said, eh, sing the song. She now sang. Morire, 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 bell. Oshie Midori. How was it? You know, amazingly, you know, because I did America now, the song sounds too local for my ears. So <laughs> I told her, I said, I don't like the song, go. So I think in the afternoon, that same word came back to me. Ah, I can't even like the song we told you to go and get. We gave you an instruction, you all need to obey. I said, eh. So I called her back, sing the song again. She sang the song again. In my mind, I didn't like the song, but because I don't hear what, I said, I like him. He don't sweet. He sweet. He sweet. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, I was in Nigeria, so we went to the studio. We recorded oh, the song, and that was it. I released it. it. Was like they were waiting for me. Like where have you been all our lives? It took over anyway. Amazing. Yeah, Beautiful. Anyway. Wow. Amazing. Thank you so much, my Kadu. So you enter inside the house. You, thank you. And please much. go download the music. I, you have a new one. I have a new one. It's called My, my season. season. Yes. Yes. So please download them and listen to good music um, from the gospel artist Mike Abdul. Thank, thank you very you. much. Follow him on top Instagram, he did there, eh? yes, and on top sir. Twitter. Just follow him, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love him.